Hey, it's Marnie. Is your computer running slow? Well, MyCleanPC.com can clean it up and speed it up today. Now, you might be asking yourself, how did my computer get this way? It's freaking frustrating, right? Well, opening infected small attachments, downloading music and games can slow your computer down. Over time, running these programs can cause junk files, internet clutter, processor and hard drive errors to build up on your computer. MyCleanPC can help. First, go to MyCleanPC.com, and in minutes, you can get a free computer diagnosis and find out what's slowing down your computer. Then simply activate MyCleanPC software to clean out the junk, internet clutter, and even remove viruses. And MyCleanPC is guaranteed to increase the speed of your computer. I promise you. With MyCleanPC, there are two easy steps to speed up your computer. First, go to MyCleanPC.com and get a free computer diagnosis. Then simply activate MyCleanPC software to optimize your computer performance. Go to MyCleanPC.com today and find out what's slowing down your computer. That's MyCleanPC.com. Go there now. The following program is a PodcastOne.com production. Podcast1.com presents the Ask Women Podcast, uh-huh. a place where two comics and a professional wing girl get together to dissect the female mind. You don't know how I feel. And explain it to men in terms they can actually understand. Booze. Now, here's the lovely ladies of Ask Women. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Ask Women Podcast. We get real advice straight from the source. I'm um, the two comedians, <laughs> yes. apparently, that are listed at the beginning of the show. I'm Kristen Carney, uh, along with Marnie Kinris, best-selling author, uh, relationship expert, owner of The Wing Girl Method, and we're here with Anderson Cowan. You did it. I did it. From uh, Although, I, if I were you, I would definitely say Cohen. Everyone loves to say Cohen. Yeah. I, mean, I would have said First it of all, way. it sounds more Jewish. Like, like, so you sound like you have more power. I'm going to switch to Cohen when I start selling my scripts and stuff. Yeah. For sure. But you're yeah. definitely In this not town, Jewish. you need it. Why am I definitely not Jewish? Come on. Look, look at you. At you. Uh, you look like a tatted, like, gym rat. Jews get tats. I look more they Jewish They don't go to the is. gym. They don't. If they get them, they hide them. I look way more Jewish than he does. All right. We're not going to have a Jew off here. And you don't look Jewish. And that's Art in the booth who I always forget to introduce. Art, my heart goes out to you. I'm sorry. What every happened time. to Art? Whatever, whatever. Yeah. She, she forgets doesn't... about him. Comes oh. to every time I forget to say there's Art. She only forgets about me during these couple hours. Every other time of the week, she's She's thinking about thinking you constantly. About constantly. <laughs> Down your throat. Yeah. Okay, so I have a couple of things to say. Number one, my mom is here in studio. Makes it uncomfortable. I'm sure. She's <laughs> very, very uncomfortable. She, she's open to anything. So if okay. you want to talk about penises, threesomes, whatever, she's very open. She you're listens. making it sound like she's open to get down now, she which is. makes it even more uncomfortable. She is. And the fact that you're not Jewish is even more exciting for her. What? Yeah, semi mom She's is in the it. house. This She's is awesome into because it. if it was my mom in here, the only thing we could talk about would be flowers and teddy bears. <laughs> not <laughs> kidding. In one. Literally yeah, not kidding. No. My mom is our biggest fan, so she listens to our podcast every week. And there's been a couple of technical issues the past two weeks. She was the first person to tell me about them. She's like, it's not working. Oh, it may, really? It may just be me not knowing oh, how to about, use this, but it's upload? only playing 17 minutes. I'm like, oh, good wow, for you. Wow, good to mom. 17 minutes. I won't even tell my mom like the name of the podcast. <laughs> she, it's like, true. No. <laughs> Don't listen. I have nightmares. She thinks, I really do. Think she works at a church or something. Yeah. No. Out in Los Angeles. You should tell your mom she doesn't have a mic. Your <laughs> what? Mom, your mom I know. Have a mic Seriously, she's, she's like. <laughs> you think that she? If she's a big she doesn't get how things work. She well, doesn't moms have a, are loud naturally, so they don't usually need mics because it. Usually well, she's quiet. Heard. So my mom, Docile. see, she's holding my cell phone right now, just in case something happens. But she doesn't have a cell phone. The only, the only person. Still, still talking. <laughs> no. Can I give her a mic. Should I put it on her? No lap? cell phone. She is I'm no, impressed. But so she's been trying to use a cell phone over here, and like the swipe thing's been really difficult for her. And then she asked the it's opposite. It's like your newborn. You probably give your newborn your your your. I know. Phone I'm like, again, ask right? Noah. He'll show you how to use it. Yeah. Exactly. So Noah. I wanted to tell us Jewish name. Noah. Very Jewish. Yeah, yeah. In this town, you gotta make it Jewish. I'm gonna make switch my last name to Goldberg. Noah Goldberg. Goldberg. Okay. He's going to All be right. head of some studio very soon. So I want to tell a story. So this will make Kristen very happy, and I'm sure you've experienced this a lot. But I was at Trader Joe's this morning. And I'm already this, not happy. Well, I love Trader Joe's. I Why are you Trader saying? That. Oh my god, I it's, love it! Like that, the, that the store stress, needs more pigment. The stress of going to Trader Joe's uh-huh. doesn't even outweigh the amount of nutrients that you get in the food at Trader Joe's. <laughs> you would because be the tannest so person in there, Kristen. Everyone is just anemic and wafy and <laughs> pale. They have to be what? wafy because, because the aisles are so th- thin. Like you I hate can't it. fit through. So no, claustrophobic. It's not that the aisles are thin; it's that the the baskets are so big, and you can't get by anything. That is it very is, true. Yeah, it's a problem. Every time I go in, it's like I I just want to shop. I don't want to maneuver. It's I more make the of same a, like, joke a video game of the maneuvering. Oh, for sure. I mean, mm-hmm. same joke. I'm like traffic jam every time I'm in there. It's a weird mix of like 
like really poor people trying to get a deal <laughs> and people that are trying to be like healthy. And I'm I don't super like healthy and pretentious. Don't like that mix. Me neither. Don't like those people. Well, I'm obviously a huge fan because I go there three <laughs> times a week. And now I'm going to go back even more okay. because Matt, the cashier, Ooh. he asked me today when uh, he was checking me out, not checking me out, but you know, checking, checking out my you out. Checking uh, you out. He's like, oh, so what are you doing for the day? I said, oh, I'm going to go, you know, do my podcast. I don't even know why I said that, but I'm going to go do my podcast. You're a bragger. I, I totally yeah. am. I'm like, I want, I want you to know I'm important. <laughs> I'm an important person who has a podcast. Mom's the biggest fan. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. She and she anyone can have a hundred thousand times a week. Um, so then he's like, oh, well, I'm going to Costa Rica. So then he was the bragger because he just wanted to get out that he was going to, to Costa Rica. Yeah. Exactly. And then he said, oh, by the way, what is your podcast? And I said, ask women. And then he's like, no way. I listened to that. No. I swear to God. So then he was looking at me thinking, you can't possibly be the girl. That's how much podcast. confidence I have in our podcast. <laughs> when I hear someone listens <laughs> no, to it. It's a random it liar. Weird, it is always strange because you forget they exist. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're like, I'm done with it. Yeah, I do my best to not listen to it. Actually. What? <laughs> right. well, he's obviously listening <laughs> now. If you yeah. could just insert that and sing her. Exactly. <laughs> Art. Anyway, I was like, oh my God, he made my day. And now I'm going to go back every week and he's going to stop listening. Did he look like he needed so dating much. help? No, he actually did. He's didn't. a checker at Trader Joe's. Of course he does. <laughs> but the best, <laughs> the best thing was that he was like, I happened to Google it. I wasn't what he was Googling. But then he found us randomly. It's not like, you know. He, what was he Googling? I don't know. He was probably Googling. Hot chicks yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what he. <laughs> we do that about. actually with um, with my podcast, the podcast that I work on sometimes. Yeah, we'll which put, I didn't mention is Film Vault. You can find on Podcast One. Film yes. Vault is the big one that I do with uh, Bob Brian, which I think you've had him. His yeah, smug he was great. Him. He's a smug motherfucker. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. uh, we'll. Like well, if we do something like a depressing topic, like uh, disaster films or uh, uh, films of uh, the bleak future, we'll we'll put sexiest bleak future films, and it's we'll get smart. more downloads. No, really? Well, yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. people on YouTube do. That's strategic. I was talking about the other Topless the other death day. scenes, but that actually yeah. works because those are the key terms that people are so searching sad. for. Because we, just... we put Nambla in there sometimes. And we, we get put more. a what? Nambla. What's that? Nambla. Yeah, you guys know Nambla? Like a Comic Con thing? The like National it? Association for Male Boy Love Association. No, of course, oh. I don't know that. You don't no. know that Nambla? It's like a punchline for every no, goddamn comic be, in the eighties. That will be the name of this week's podcast. Anderson, I'm much younger than you. No, wow, that was <laughs> no, okay. awful, like, <laughs> slight right there. <laughs> it's true. Is it not? I, I don't know. How I, old are you? I don't see age, man. I'm blind to it. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, Thirty six. Uh, Oh, that's sweet. I was, oh, really? I'm, I'm a little over forty. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. I would have said thirty six. Yeah, too. I would have said thirty six. All uh-huh. right. See, now you like thirty one. We'll go with we'll go with thirty six. Okay. One I'm other, Cohen. My name. Based my name on is your Cohen. tattoo, you're like thirty eight because it was cool like thirty years ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's true. When I got this tattoo, I was that guy. Like I walk in a room and people are like, oh, he's got like a full tattoo on his arm. And now it's the but norm. it's cool because I film. love those. Everybody, had, yeah, it's film. One it's of my cool. ex boyfriends had one of those bands. I loved it. I thought it was so sexy. One of your ex boyfriends. You're married. One. Well, I, I can have it. Talking an about this Trader Joe guy, talking about your ex, sexy ex I'm married boyfriend. with a son. I need attention, obviously. Right, yes. yes. And anybody right, well, who does see me out there, whistle at me or pick me up. I <laughs> give me whatever I like it. I'm open to I'm it. I'm telling it you, to just me. walk by like a construction zone of Mexicans and you will get all wow. kisses out. I do and I, I don't get rich. kisses. <laughs> what? I don't believe it. Didn't I tell you, did I say it last time when I was walking with my au pair and suddenly we said, what? Suddenly, yeah, we got we got whistles, and I was like, "Oh, that's for you. It's a nanny for regular people. Is that French it's word a, for nanny? It's a nanny for cheaper people. I thought au pair was more like it's no, fancier. You pay them less it because sounds they're shipped way in fancier. from another country. No, it sounds fancier. To stupid people, but it's it not. sounds fancier, which is most of us. Fine, which is me. I'll pretend that I am. Next fancier. time you're talking to a checkout guy, but I got my <laughs> podcast coming up right after I drop off my au pair. He's gonna think you're really fancy. <laughs> He's like, "You stupid bitch! I hate you. I'm never listening to your podcast <laughs> again." Au pair, Kristen, you let her get away with that. Sorry. Uh, well, I call I call it out, but I didn't know it was the cheaper version. It is. Okay. okay, I want to do a Wing Girl Minute, and then I want to bring up an article that I read recently. So let's get ready for a Wing Girl Minute. Men. Men, you may or may not believe this, but all women are sexual, sed- sensual creatures waiting to be released. Truth is, women are actually more sexual than men. Tap into a woman's sensual side and she will be yours forever. How do you do this? By actually paying attention while getting sexual. Watch her body moves, listen to her sounds, and most importantly, go slow. I promise if you do these three things, you will unlock any woman and help her release the sexual, sensual beast inside her. And that is a wing girl minute. <laughs> Was that a minute? That was a little less. The only beast I have inside me is an angry one. Jesus. Okay. So I want to talk about this What? What, Kristen? I said the only beast I have inside me is an angry one. (laughs) I can sense that. I like it. Yes. Tame tame the beast. Okay. So there was this article that I read or somebody sent to me. And it's titled, The Larger Your Penis, The More Likely Your Wife Will Cheat, Says a New Study. Yeah. I, I heard this study. 
It makes very little sense to me. Well, your wife, so your wife hasn't cheated at all, I'm assuming. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> but, okay, so this is the I thing. I would suggest you've seen it. <laughs> so this, okay, it, was, it was on the Huffington Post, in case anybody wants to look it up. It's uh, the larger your penis, the more likely your wife will cheat, says new study. So why, why do you think that is? Like, why, as a woman and as a man, do you think I got that that would happen? I got a theory. Okay. All right. I don't know if the lady's going to like this, but it's mo- mostly dudes that listen It might to this, be right? the same as my theory, which I said earlier, and they're here to verify what my theory is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think that the chick who... The broad. Is that good? Broad? Yes. Broad's broad fine. Uh, broad who bitch, marries the guy with the big dick, like excessively big dick. She's how, the hoe, right? She's the hoe. She yes, needs big cock. And she's going to keep going. Yeah, That's yeah. exactly what but I said before She's got the got taste here. and she's like hooked on that dragon and she will this continue. It's interesting yeah. that you had the same thought. Okay. Because a woman who would, who would pick a guy with a small penis clearly almost seems like she's less... Um, it's not about the penis. It's not. It's about the relationship. And if you pick a man with a giant wang, yeah. it's more about, about the penis. The penis than it is the so she's always hungry for more. Is that yeah, what you're and plus saying? like, yeah. Okay, yeah. so she's always chasing the that's, next big cock. That's my theory, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's exactly. Uh, Anderson. I'm sorry to be so cr- crass. I, no, you can be totally crass on this. I show. was trying to even things out. That's kind of my thing. I'm always like trying to make like if if there's not enough crassness, I'll try and make it more crass. If you guys were filthy crass, I would try and bring it down. I like even keel. Yeah, everything's so, yin yang. So I'm well, be a well listen to what this normal. said. Okay, so they said what they found was rather shocking. Every one inch longer penis increased the likelihood of, of women being involved in extramarital partnership. By almost one and a half times. And that's at every wh- inch. It's like women, a Richter scale. Yeah, women. <laughs> Dictor scale. <laughs> Dictor scale. <laughs> women associated large penises with pain and discomfort during sex, which precludes the enjoyment and sexual satisfaction that women are supposed to feel. Um, where was the quote that I had read from the women? Some penis. Oh, some penises may be large, yet my vagina is small. <laughs> when he tries to insert it inside, worry. it hurts so much that I will have to look for another man who has a smaller penis and can do it in the way I can enjoy. Which is interesting because, you know, men with larger penises, they probably can't do that much with it. They, can they just, just lay. Yeah, they just lay there. Yeah. And then, like, rip a woman, and it's not enjoyable she for She said her. that, and then she hobbled away. Yeah, exactly. Hobbled in her crotch. Uh, but that, this is good news for men with small penises. Working on, I've worked on Loveline for over 15 years now, so I've heard literally thousands and thousands of calls. And we do get many more women calling up complaining about the giant phallus rather than the uh, small phallus. Really? Way more. I'd say two to one. Maybe three to one. Complaining wow. about it? Saying Complaining it's too about big, being augured out and just always in pain and they can't have a healthy sexual relationship because it really? hurts too much. We rarely get the girl who calls, my boyfriend's penis is too small, too what do small. I do? We don't get that a whole lot. Really? We okay, that's way interesting. more with the, uh, the big dick's problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yes, and we forgot to mention that you are also. On yeah, I, I, I'm. I do lots of stuff in this business. Uh, I'm sure you guys realize this. You have to do like nine jobs to to pay bills. Yeah, exactly. So uh, to order McDonald's. Been working on Loveline forever, and then podcasting came along like four or five years ago, and then I started doing some uh, my own stuff with the Film Vault. I also have the After Disaster, which I don't expect anyone to listen to this and buy a ticket with Mike Carano. But with Mike Carano, yes. And then who? Who else? Uh, Tyler White, who okay. is uh, he's like our, our board op, who has inserted himself now into the front of the show. So he's one of the three hosts almost, even though I don't like to give him credit for that. Right, but it's that's a really what art fun does show. with us all the yeah, time. Seriously. It's like yeah, art. He's quiet like down. the art, but. Uh, <laughs> He's not even talking now. <laughs> but he listens. He's not even alive. He actually listens. And uh, we're actually doing a live show at the Hollywood Improv on July 12th. You are. Which I'd be remiss not to, to mention because yeah. uh, we're doing it July 12th. Uh, 10 o'clock is the time of the show. Well, Tickets this is going to come out in October. At so. the impro- are you serious? <laughs> no, no. It's coming I want to be shocked. It's That's the way things... Okay, good. It's coming out this week. And uh, here's, the, here's the kicker. Sorry your mom's here for this, but <laughs> we have a band playing right after us, which is the greatest living band on the planet right now. And I want... I, if I'm going to instill anything into your listeners' heads right now, I want them to know about this band called Fart Barf, which no. is the worst name for any band. Come fart on. is my least favorite word uh, in the English language. It should be Barf. Like, Everyone band. knows Barfing's better than Farting. I hate the word Fart. I hate it. They can never be love, famous, though. That's the thing. You can't imagine that. Like, oh, see, Fart Barf. Barf. Like, the Grammy goes to Fart Barf. Like, that's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. <laughs> but they're the greatest, and they're playing right after us. And here... All right, just real quick thumbnail sketch of Fart Barf, all right? Uh, three guys in the band. I hate them. No, you're gonna love them. You will love them, Kristen. Look at I'm her. telling her you, arms I thought are I was gonna... She feels violated already. It's the worst name ever. It really is. Well, no, I love saying like you don't like the word fart. I, I like the word, the word fart. fart. I love barf. The word I don't fart. really like so much. I'd I'd much I'm more of a barf puke. You know, I I, I puke. Fart puke I didn't okay. barf. All right. But There's anyway, three I, guys in the band. Two of them are keyboards. <laughs> yeah, get back to it. Two two of them are on, on synthesizers, right? And then there's a guy in the middle who plays drums. Oh, All right? interesting. And they sing through a vocalizer, so they sound like this when they're singing. And like a fart. No, or not somebody having to barf. That's, that's like someone trying to fart. No, no, no. It sounds like they have like lung cancer. Oh. No, yeah, it's a cigarette the, smoker. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying it sounds like they're forcing like the, out a fart. The guy from South. No, no, it doesn't sound like that, guys. You're, you're not. You're <laughs> mis-selling them. But here's the best part: they all wear Sibian masks. 
So they all like have like they look like 2001 Space Odyssey. What are They're those? wearing like, like uh, monkeys. They look like, like half man, half monkey. Ugh, I hate them. No, you. I know it sounds awful, but yeah. they were the greatest thing They're ever. Obnoxious. Every single person, uh, 90, my mom didn't like them, but every, like 95% of <laughs> everyone, everyone I like turn them. on. I trust her. <laughs> check out Fart Barf Online. They're, they're <laughs> yeah. amazing. And uh, I see tons of music. I and mean, I've been working around, in and oh, around K Rock for like 15, 20 years. Gonna... These guys belong in Coach- uh, Coachella. They belong to be, they should be huge, but they're playing Who's right their after manager. Us. I'm going to Google have... Fart Barf and just see the images that come up. Oh, so this is the music? I got a great video that I shot and directed on AndersonCowan.com of a live performance of Fart Barf and uh, check them out. Fine. Very cool. We will tell come, people to do Come that. check them out July 12th at the Hollywood Improv. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk a couple more minutes about you and women. Okay. Right? Because you are married, but you said you, you were with her for what, eight and a half We've years? We've been before? together for like 11 years now. Okay. It's been a little off, but uh, mostly on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so what made you finally want to get married to this woman? What 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 uh, was the kicker? She's a really strong lady, and she was just kind of not Not that real. strong, which took eight and a half years. <clears throat> well, she I mean, when we first started dating, she was idealistic, and she used to talk about how she didn't want to have kids. Uh, or get married, which I thought was great. But then, you know, as time went on, it just kind of made sense because we really worked well together. And she moved in with me. And then after like two years of living together, it's like I should – I put this chick through so much hell. I should at least do something – Something nice in return. Something nice. Well, I'll marry Something – uh, what's the word? Uh, and promise I'd, myself to her for all I'd of her. Nice I actually got on my yeah. knee and I did the whole thing and I, and I cried a little bit. But that's very uh, nice of you. Yeah. I wanted to give her something traditional, something that, uh, you know, because I, I, she had went away to college and we had some problems. But uh, we're back on track. And we got married, and uh, it's, it's awesome. good. Yeah, yeah. So, did you want to get married, or did you really do it for her? <sighs> no, I, I don't. I, I, I didn't want to be with anyone else. I realized that it's her for the rest. Of, and I always hated the idea of marriage and getting the government involved in your relationship. It just doesn't right. make sense. But like I said, I wanted to do something traditional, something right. And uh, I mean, she's such a great. I love her so much, and I, I just wanted to do the right thing and the traditional thing. Uh, however, she's still not changed her last name, so. I'm kind of pissed, and I regret the whole thing. Yeah, but <laughs> Cowan. Are you, you to talk shit now? With the well, I like I'm just Cowan. saying, I wouldn't go with Cowan. I like Cowan. Everyone says Cowan because they're afraid to say cow. Yeah. yeah. No, but I like if she Cowan. gains weight, it would just be too weird. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, that's true. She'll be alone. Too. That is true. Are you open to yeah. having kids? Because that's... Yeah, we're, gonna, we're talking about it. She's getting her master's in social work right now. So once she's done with school in like a year, we're going to... We're gonna, Leave well, this in. is interesting. Okay, so I, I want to talk more about this because a lot of women, you know, when you maybe do first meet them, the idea of children is not, you know, really as important to them. If you meet somebody when they're 24 or 25, they're like, no, I don't want to have kids. Or I started I, dating her when she was 20. Okay, tw- so at yeah. that point, you're like, oh, I don't want to have kids. Is it, is it, okay, so let's say you started a relationship when you're 25 years old and both of you are at the start of your careers, you're having fun, you're running out, you're a couple, you're together, but you're still like socializing, being really fun people. Um, and you both say, I don't want to have kids. And later on, on down the road, like five years later, one person suddenly says, I do want to have kids. Is that, in your opinion, unfair to the other person if they haven't also shifted their well, thinking? Unfair to discuss it or unfair to just unfair. secretly like put holes in condoms? Oh, well, <laughs> that's quite unfair to do. Fishing that's them saying, out of the trash. Would and- you say like, oh, you, you're like, would you say to her suddenly, oh, you know, I was with you because you didn't want to have Well, if that's children. the main reason you're with someone, that's not a very good, strong foundation to begin with. I want I'm to not say. with them for that reason, but with them because, you know, you have the same values, you have the same plan for the future. Would you sh- I shift? Think being in a mind space where you want to have a kid, add a little creature to your family and the world, especially with the way things are going. I mean, if you listen to certain people, like the kid's going to be a baked potato by the time it's 11 because of global warming. I don't know how <laughs> responsible it is to bring the kid into the world. But if you're in that mindset... And the other person's not. I would think that they've almost grown apart in such a drastic way that maybe it is time to think about explore other yeah. options. That's why I am such a proponent, I guess you would say, of not dating too young, not dating the person you're going to be with when you're too young, or marrying them too young. Yeah, because you change so. You much. do. You change a lot. I think by the time you're 25, the cement's kind of hardened. From eh. what I've seen, I think around like 28, 26. 29. Yeah, I would say 20. You're pretty much like 28. Yeah. I was off by two years. Yeah, evidently. no, but that's close. I don't know, but like from twenty to twenty-five, that's a, that's a huge growth spurt yeah. for individuals to figure out who they are, depending on where they're and living. And she changed a lot when I started dating her when she was twenty, and now she's like you know in her thirties. She's changed uh, a whole lot. She'd probably kill me. She'll never hear this, but she'd kill me if she she heard me quote her 
soon after we started dating, she said that she didn't want to have a kid because if it was crying throughout the middle of the night, she'd be one of those moms that would just shake it to death. <laughs> no, I feel the exact same <laughs> and it way. It kind of made me love her a we little bit more because of her candor. Yeah. Right. No, but it's great. But okay, so that that so what did you but guys? We have three little chihuahuas now, and uh, she hasn't shaken any of them. Perfect. So, yeah. And they're still alive. She shook. Well, one other thing I wanted to ask you before we go to a break because we have an amazing guest on the second half of the show. Um, so so just that was a slight as well. <laughs> not, not this not, not this attack. half of the show. Horrible. Um, <laughs> but like, what did you do? to get through those changes because, you know, 20 to mid 30. Yeah. There's a lot of tumultuous times. There's so, a lot of, I, I'm shocked that, uh, that it worked out for us to be honest. But how did, how did you do the work? Um, she, like I said, she's, she's the, she, I've never met anyone who's so good at laying it out and explaining what's really going on, cutting right through my bullshit, seeing through my bullshit and just saying Anderson, she calls me Andy. Uh, I'm not, I'm not dealing with it to the point where like I'd call her up the next day and she'd be like, I, I told it wasn't even an ultimatum. It was just she was just saying you're not treating me fairly. This isn't right, and I don't want to talk to you until you figure it out. And she caused me to grow up, and it was it was uh, fantastic because there was other girls that every girl that I dated up until her was like they're massaging my feet and getting me beers and, and you know encouraging me to do <laughs> cocaine and stuff, and I'd be God. dead probably. Right? <laughs> so would they? Yeah. They might be. I don't know. I'm not allowed to talk okay. to them anymore. No. <laughs> no, but so that's interesting. So she's somebody who actually communicated with you. Yeah, she's was really good at communicating. You. And it really helped me see not just my own self, but like our our relationship and, and everything. And uh, yeah. That's very similar to my boyfriend and I. He's the biggest the bullshit cocaine artist. Her. Um, unfortunately, no, we're not that exciting. Mm-hmm. But he's the biggest bullshit artist in the world. He should have been a lawyer. He can like squirm or wiggle his way out of mm-hmm. anything. Is he a pickup artist? Because those guys. No, are God, no, he's he the furthest artist. thing no. from pickup artist. Yeah, he, but they're all such bullshit artists. That, right. Yeah, he, but he is huh. to an extent of like. Um, he doesn't care to help other people <laughs> like, get, get oh, somewhere. It's more selfish. Right. Yeah. That's a nice uh, quality. But like, he, I think I was the first person who was able to call him on all of that. Yeah. I see directly through it. And I can almost see every time I call him out on it, he's like, oh, damn you. But it, he likes it at the same time. And you know what he probably does, which is what I did with my wife, was I was just imagining other people doing what she was doing to me and saying the things that she was. And I hated those people. But, right. And she, all of her shortcomings kind of proved to me how much I loved her because I still completely loved her even though she's never cooked anything for me in my life. Even right. I feel like I, it sounds like I'm a glutton for punishment but it's not. It's just that she, all of her positive attributes so outweigh the negative ones even though those negative ones I wouldn't even allow to uh, surface with anyone else at right. all. So, and I think people have to remember that, that there are always going to be negative attributes in a relationship or to someone you're dating and it's yeah. just being outweighed by the positive. Yeah. yeah. But it's really interesting because you typically the thing that you fall in love with the person for is what you end up hating later on in the I hear that a lot, but I think that yeah. comes with being young and, and doing it when you're young as well. Yeah. I, here's one little trick that I uh, uh, learned a little too late. I, I wish that I had known this when I was younger, but uh, talking to, and I did, I employed this a little bit with, with my wife uh, before we were married. You pretend, you try and pretend that they're not a girl, that they're just some dude, like a friend of yours, like yeah. a guy friend. And, you know, get that in your head while you're talking. Don't even look at them like if you're hanging out, having dinner or something or watching something. And imagine if that's a guy saying what that person's saying and it's a dude. Is, like, you she's still like, want to be- I, like she's like, I love fart barf. That's what I was going to say, too. She doesn't, though. She's pretty upset with the fact with that I love them. them. <laughs> but uh, she, that was my joke as well. If you still want to be, fr- if you still want this person around and they're a guy and you don't want to bang them, that's a quality person. Yeah. Because it's really hard to like look at a pretty girl and forget that what they're saying is awful. Yeah, exactly. That they're you horrible, horrible them. people. Exactly. Good tip. But even like if you're talking to somebody, a really hot woman, and you're intimidated by them, you can just think fart, barf, fart, barf, fart, barf in your mind all the time. Mm-hmm. And, and then she suddenly, has farted and barfed. Yes, farted and barfed. And picturing and her times. doing those oh, things I, or picturing her to be a dude, Girls and it makes fart. it a lot easier. Yeah. It's hard to get your mind to go into Girls, that space. But anyway. Fart. Anyway. Oh, wait, wait, I heard one what? more. This is a good one, too. Uh, pretend, if you're intimidated by girls, pretend that uh, you have a girlfriend and this is your girlfriend's friend and talk to her that way. I think that'd be pretty good. Wait, oh, yeah, you because do? you already feel like you're in the club if like you're you talking wanna, to her friend. Yeah, I forget like, who said this. Somebody said this on Love Line a few weeks ago and I thought, that's, that's a great little tip. Like It was us. Was it you guys? Yeah, no, no. I'll give you credit. <laughs> Probably not. I but you, like, you, horrible advice. you just pretend that uh, like you have like... It is like you think of it's uh, you have like when you had an old girlfriend and this is your girlfriend's friend. So you're being very nice. You're being polite. You're showing your best self without being like reachy or grabby or, right. or uh, desperate. 
Right, right, oh, right. I like that. But then you're also not intimidated by her because exactly. you're already taken. You're committed right. already. So See, you if can you have trick that your mind. If you can trick your mind. It is really hard to, to trick your mind. But if you start getting into the habit of doing I've it. I've been doing like, it since I was a kid. Cause, it's yeah, amazing. Yeah, well, I always sometimes. say the first step is to start noticing something. And then you can start to alter behavior and change a habit. So if you can start applying this and yeah. practicing doing it, it'll actually become natural. And then you can do it more often. I'm really good at tricking my I, People that I hate, I pretend that they're dead if I know I have to see them. Like Rich. <laughs> I've tricked myself into being on this podcast. Like, I don't belong on this podcast. <laughs> You know, Rich, uh, you, you guys work with Rich? Yeah. yeah. I like I knew that I had to see him today, and uh, I was going to be upset by it. So I pretended <laughs> I pretended like he was dead. And on the elevator ride up, I was thinking, hey, Rich is dead. That's so sad. I'll and never I see him, him again. And then when I saw him, I get excited. I'm like, oh, Rich isn't dead anymore. Oh, that is funny. <laughs> and it oh, works. I totally get it now. Rich, if you're listening, I'm kidding. I love you. But uh, <laughs> it does work. I used to do it with neighbors that I hated all the time. Really? Yeah. And then I hey, know I would be like, damn fake. it, they came back from the dead. <laughs> Because <laughs> yeah. you really are cold and heartless. Yeah, yeah. I just pretend people. to be. Yeah. She hates people. All right, tell people who we have coming up on the second half of the show. So we have Zinga Blake coming up. She's a super hottie hot, McHot, and yes. she was a host. She's an actress, and um, she's she's black. I guess I'll just say that so we can talk about interracial dating, which yes. I know Bill here. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's awkwardly real. But we'll be back uh, after this break with Zinga Blake. Perfect. Buying a car is a not-so-fun experience for most people, and it doesn't have to be. At TrueCar.com, they'll help you get rid of the fear that you may overpay. You know when you'll get a fair price because they show you what others paid for the car you're looking for. TrueCar.com analyzes what people are paying for their cars in their market and shares it with consumers so that they never have to overpay. Over 40,000 cars were sold by TrueCar certified dealers just last month. Users see an average savings of $3,046 off MSRP. TrueCar certified dealers go through a certification process and you work directly with a true car representative that will honor your savings true car certified dealers believe that truth and transparency are essentials to a better buying experience first go to truecar.com and find out what others pay for the same vehicle in your market and around the country second register at truecar.com to see upfront pricing information and lock in your savings certificate and the third step is simple just print out your certificate and take it to the true car certified dealer for a better hassle-free buying experience experience. True Car has the most comprehensive new car pricing information available and a certified network of dealers that offers a hassle-free car buying experience and negotiation-free guaranteed savings. Support the Ask Women podcast and shop at truecar.com. You're listening to the Ask Women podcast, a podcast one presentation. Whatever. Hey, guys, welcome back to the Ask Women podcast. We're here with Zynga Blake, and of course, we have Anderson still with us being uh, being a douche. Checking the score. <laughs> zero, zero. Oh, good. Oh, yes. That's typical and it's, and it's of the soccer game. Three hours of the game. Right. Zero, zero. That's how soccer works. Yeah. Um, Is it not working? We can't hear her. I don't have headphones. She has no headphones or a mic. Oh. Well, no, I can hear her. Okay, you can hear her? You, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. We don't, don't, we don't need you to hear us. Oh, you can okay. hear us on your own. We just have we music to cue us in. Yeah, pretty good no, we, hearing. we have headphones so we can intimidate you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have them. We're the professionals. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're not. And Follow you're, our you're too hot to be in someone's <laughs> Oh, yeah. There you go. All right, so I met you, like, a, was it a week ago? About a week and a half. How did you guys meet? I was on their show. Oh, cool. I fell instantly in love with her. Like, I did like not everybody. fall instantly in love with her. Oh. Just kidding. She's a hard No, we connected right away. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I think the mommy thing definitely helps. Oh, 100%. I, well, first of all, they're like, yeah, she just had a baby eight weeks ago. And I was like, excuse me, where's your stomach? It like, is crazy, right? She looks so good. Continue. Yeah, Continue. yeah no, Talk like you look so, so <gasps> oh, good. Oh, thank you. you know? I love the show. It's really cool. I do, too. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's kind of like the Tell view, me about the I show. Say. So, yeah, The Girl Spot is a show on BitesizeTV.com. Do you guys call it the G-Spot for short? Uh, yeah, a lot of people, people say do. that. Yeah. Okay. But it's it's an awesome show. It and, is. you know, the, the, the energy is great. The girls are great. And we get to talk about women's issues and, like, a younger perspective. Like you said, it's like a yeah. younger version of The View and a live version of Cosmo Magazine. That's so it's not, like a, it's not like a menopausal version of The View. <laughs> that is like The, the view. view. Right, right. Oh, oh, oh. It is. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> I mean, I just feel so bad. It just feels like everything is going on over there at the view because i've loved the view so much oh, me too. like that was like my dream job me you know? too oh, yeah. like as a host so of course when i got on the show i was like oh my god this is amazing <laughs> exactly and now you hear there's two spots available you know i don't like the view 
You don't. Well, I'm, I'm not, being the not man surprised. Voice. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah dude. Oh really, my god. You don't really have the right parts to like. Middle-aged yeah. women cackling is literally bunch of my brother's worst nightmare. <laughs> not you, Kristen. I'm surprised that you like the view. You You're know, I, me down over here. I only watch it sometimes for like for the, for the hate of uh-huh, it. Like, okay. oh, I I don't like her, or oh, I don't yeah. like what she said, or or oh, I, I do like what she said, but you know. So what? It's yes. more for the judgment. But I gotta tell you, you guys, I really do like the talk though. The talk? Oh, yeah, no. the talk. On, you Which one's know? that? It's on CBS. It's with the girl like, from Roseanne. Julie Ch- Chen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like Aisha Tyler. And, and the yes, only yeah. time I saw that was I was at the gym. Um, and that was the only time I was at the gym. But it was. Um, <laughs> and that's you, why you, you hate me. You and me both, girl. Yeah. You and me both. I was angry. I was running. I'm like, I hate you. Yeah. No, I'm not I, angry. I mean, I mean, no, it's, it's, it's sad. But it was around Halloween and they were all dressed. Or it was like Olivia Newton John or something. Mm. They were all dressed as Olivia Newton John. I was like, oh my God, please. Like, this is so desperately pathetic. Oh, really? Yeah. It was. Uh, they're all. In like the either her 80s or boring her Anderson. I mean, this is this no, is this I'm not, okay, I'm I'm completely engaged. now now we're totally about like the view women like boring. <laughs> no, I'm trying again. to remember what what uh, Xanadu has. She has some kind I of love cult. Xanadu. She, I so do I. Yeah. She has some kind of cult though. Living Newton John like sells his She's Zeus awesome. powder or something. Oh, oh is no. that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. Oh, I thought it was Zeus literally powder. just a wall that came to life. <laughs> <laughs> like that's is that not what it was? No. It was them doing drugs. No, but any oh, movie that I saw when I was beyond Xanadu, like she now right now she sells some kind of like eternal youth juice or something and you have to pay a bunch of money to get oh, into it. Mike wow. Carano went and did the whole thing. What yeah. is going really? on? Yeah, check I it out. I thought you just mm. ruined Creepy. Xanadu for like me. No, Xanadu's sir. always going to be awful but great. Yes. Awful. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Roller skates all the time. God, what he comes so to life on ourselves. a fucking mural. Are you kidding me? <laughs> exactly. Starts rollerblading around See, so Santa Monica. not ruined for me. No, it's great. He's Santa Monica. Anyway, I have a lot that I want to talk to you about okay. and hopefully they will want to talk to you about this as well because you were talking to me about your life being a single mom, being black in Hollywood, dating in Hollywood. Okay, so tell us as well the main conversation we had was about the conversations that you were having with your other female my other female friends because yes. I wanted the people to listen on the show about the pressure that goes on for women yes I mean well, especially being a, a woman who is uh, well, I guess a woman of color but I think women nowadays uh, professional women nowadays I think have a lot of pressure on them yeah. because you know you grow up and you like my parents taught us to become really independent you know, it's yeah. like I have two professional parents. I'm used to being in a household where my mother works. You know, she's a professional dietitian, and you know, like we've traveled all. I over can the tell world. by your arms. You have oh, the best thanks. arms in the no, world. No, honey, that's just being African. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have good arms? Thank you. I don't. No, I don't work out. I really don't. You it's, don't? No, it's really. It's. I'm like the laziest person. It's all aesthetics. This just. It's just. It just sprayed. Wow. Sprayed on. Yeah. So I, you know, just yeah, but just being a career woman, and I think being in Hollywood, it's like you just focus on your career. And I know for myself that I really wanted a family. Mm-hmm. And being in LA, it's a little hard to date. And why? Why is that? I, I hear that a lot. You know, it's. I guess it's. I think the problem is we're in Tinseltown, and I think we we aspire to be these characters in these you know mm-hmm. fairy tale like movies and like having these love lives that you see on TV and and on film. And it's like I don't want to be a Debbie Downer and say it's not realistic, but oh, it's what? not. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah. She said it. It's it's not. And it's like a lot goes into a relationship, a lot of work. And so um I you know, I got to this point in my life where I felt like I need to travel. So I you know, I, I got um invited to host this premiere in Lagos, Nigeria, and I was so excited and so I'm going to be a world traveler and I went to Lagos and I got invited to, to you know um, my parent my family and I are from Sierra Leone. I'm, I'm American, I was born here, but um we had our fiftieth independence celebration and so they're like, Oh, we want you to host this Women of Excellence Awards and the first lady will be there and I was like, Oh my god, this is amazing. So I went to Sierra Leone and you know, that's where I went my husband and you know it was it was amazing you met him while you're over there uh, yeah while i was on vacation doing doing your the, the hosting that thing yeah well you know our fa- our families were pretty good friends oh, okay. you know and so it was really cool um because here i was before leaving los angeles i'm staying with all my girlfriends and you know it's like you sit with these incredible professional women who are just it's like this the table game. right now like this table right now right <laughs> yeah amazing women and it's like I, you know, you admire them, and all of a sudden, it turns into this big cry fest because oh, everybody this is, is part like, of interesting. yeah, because everyone's like in their mid to late thirties or even forties, and they haven't been married, or maybe they have been married, but they didn't have the child, and now it's like the the, the clock is ticking, tick tock, tick tock, and it's like, oh my gosh, I don't have a baby. What am I going to do? And it's it was scary to me because you know I have some friends who have decided to have babies on their own. 
and they're in their 40s and they're professional and I thought to myself I'm like I don't know if I want that you know I want the love I want the kid and right. and so when I met this person I was just like oh my gosh I think this is it you know um, <laughs> do you think that's you, I hope you view? didn't say it to him like that I you start no, running I no yeah I, I don't think it's uh, yes I do I do think it's skewed my view I really do um and it was really tough because I, I you know long distance dating Skype relationships are not <laughs> I, do. I, don't think, no. I don't think they're ideal. They cut out no, a lot you don't get to know. No, you don't get to really you can get know to know them, and then you have to actually yeah. be with. The you know, person. I mean, look. The, 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 you know, every, in hindsight, it's all twenty twenty. But I think what I learned from this situation is that you really have to get to know someone. You know, and just because you both are at the same place and you want a family, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to work out. And it's okay. And you know, it's like I'm, I'll never bash my ex because you know, before my, my child's sake, you know, I'll always respect. If you didn't have a child, you bash the shit up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, because I'll just I, I'll never do that, you know, just for her sake, and and it just doesn't make any sense. And, and the thing is, he gave me the best gift of my life, right? You know, um, I'll I'll never take that back because I think I'm I'm a better person because of her because I want to do better because of her, you know, Which and is I amazing. want yeah, and I want her to be a better version of me. So it really pushes me and drives me to do so much. Oh my god, oh, I'm afraid. I know he just got close like, to the Yeah, mic. I'm afraid. <laughs> He's about <laughs> to ask I'm, me something. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, you know, we were talking about it a little earlier yeah. if I want to have kids. And, like, it's – I don't understand how you make that decision. I literally will stand in front of the stove trying to figure out scrambled or hard-boiled for, like, 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I will. I'm a little crazy. I'll tell you that. why. You I love how you have... just referred to eggs. I, I, yeah, I know. I know. I, 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 I did that on purpose. Well, like I mean – But I, I don't know how you make – Now, you, you, got, you ladies, you kind of have, like, the, the eternal clock, and you have that biological thing that I think, you know, was implanted in you from childhood from birth to want to have a kid to want yes. to procreate I don't know if, if guys have that well that's if, because you can procreate till kingdom come yeah, I mean come. <laughs> literally literally <Kingdom. laughs> but I also and I'm always looking for little cues and whatnot. and I just learned this uh, another sports related thing but like uh, a lot of the time they've done a study where professional athletes when they have a kid mm-hmm. the following year their stats will go up most of the time Really? Because, yeah, I because it, because it yeah, gives them more purpose harder. in yeah, the world. Yeah, and probably more focus. So I'm like, fuck, I gotta have a kid now. It's really I need funny. I'm, I'm, you know, it's I'll, very I'll true. Have these, more I'll downloads. have that conversation now with my girlfriends. Like my girlfriends who have kids, like Marnie and I, of course, like we com- instantly click because it's like, oh, we can talk about kids, and yeah. it's it's like you're a part of a different club, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, but at well, the same time, and then and, well, <laughs> well, just I mean, you're just it, it just it, it it's hard. You just it's start. like AA for responsible people, right? Yeah, really. But. <laughs> but um, but then the baby's but then the you 13th talk, chip. 13th you talk step. to your girlfriends right. who are still, you know, who are still looking for that someone, and there it's like major TikTok, TikTok. I mean, their eggs are like sitting in the waiting room, like you know, like no, like literally they like, are like any day now, you know, like just waiting. But so, from your point of view, like tell me what that does to your dating life. Do you, like do you approach dating differently? You know. It's so interesting because everyone's like, well, are you looking to get into something? I'm like, I don't know. I don't like that's my focus right now because my daughter is my focus. How old is your daughter? She's 21 months. 21 months. She's a baby, you know, and I just got back. I just moved back to L.A. I'm just getting back on my feet. And divorce does awful things to you. Yeah. You know, it just. Have you thought about Tinder? No, hell no. Okay. <laughs> no. We talk about Tinder all the time. We're oh my gosh, I know. And they're not, not even allowed. paying Look, us to talk Tinder, about them. Tinder sounds really, really grim. Yeah. Right. It sounds oh, yeah. really, really woman, awesome to me. Of course, because you're in a good relationship. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the grass is always greener. Is Yeah, that's true. The grass is always greener. That's true. And just thinking about my dating life before, it's like, I guess when you're younger, it's okay to date around because you're like, oh, I have time. But then when you get older, you're like, oh my God, I have to settle down. But I got to tell you, having a kid and being single now, there's not pre- there's no pressure on me. Because really, no, because I already have a child. Right, right. So you don't need so that. I don't need that. And so it's out of the it way. Actually, it's like you checked it off your bucket list. Yeah, it yeah. Out. It's like oh, I had a child. You know, but now I can actually take my time. I can actually focus on me, make me happy. Because if I am not happy, my child is not going to be happy. It's like the, the oxygen I on end the plane. up with that. Yeah, it, it's yeah. like the person I end up with won't be happy as well. So, but that's really interesting because I would say the same thing for my my sister in law, right? Mm-hmm. So she had two kids with her first husband. Yeah, they had a horrible marriage. There was she literally, I think, you know, raced to get married to have kids and convince herself that she was in love with him. He was a complete mess. They divorced. Blah blah blah. And now she's in an amazing relationship. And mm-hmm. she said the same thing. She's like, I'm free now. Mm-hmm. I have have those kids already so yeah. that's under my belt yeah. and now I can just like love and explore and yeah. have fun you can just be. that is no, really you interesting can be. and it's like you don't need to be in a relationship to survive and I right. think that's one thing that a lot of women get 
themselves into and you can get into a lot of trouble like we were talking on the show we were talking about you know like violence against women and then you know you had the santa barbara massacre and you you know you the, there's this culture but it's not just in this society it's societies everywhere and it's like you know there's this there's this article too where i think did you hear about that where um they wrote about i don't women. know what it is they're like women you have you should marry your baby daddies in order to be in a safer relationship and nah, it's like I don't uh, know that. no i think the you know what women need to focus on is themselves and educate themselves yeah. because at the end of the day when you have an education you regardless of whatever happens to you in your life you will be able to support yourself and your child if you have one so I think that's what needs to be emphasized for you sure know? and of course yes self, self defense classes are always good thing, you know, <laughs> for sure good to kick butt but I think at the end of the day <laughs> women should focus on themselves and it's like back in the day right i feel like you know the older generations it's like oh yeah you went to school to get your mrs degree not your phd and now we're like going for our and you know our bas our masters our my PAs. wife's right now my <laughs> wife's getting her masters in social work right now yeah. that's awesome and it, once she's done i can totally leave and she'll be fine Ma- there you, you know go I mean? there you go give her a baby wow. she's you done guys, she'll you guys- date an amazing man it, uh, so rude and hard. There you go. Did you see uh, just downstairs today at 10 a.m. There is a uh, class for violence in the workplace. Here, really? yeah. Yeah. I, I, I did not. We come up to the parking lot. So it we seems don't like that. very like apropos right now because we have Anderson here. Uh-huh. I think they planned it on purpose. It was like, exactly. gives you skill set to like realize if someone's about to blow up in your office space. Oh. I, really, I would have loved to have attended that. Those oh, things are so scary. dumb, though. So just, dumb. They're so dumb. It's just use your judgment. Kristen, treat you other and people I should have like, gone there. I know. And blown and up. Bashed it. That's scary. Wait, one just thing I want to talk about like you want to be treated. Yeah. Well, I just want to clarify one thing though. I'm not saying that women don't need men or you know vice versa, whatever. I'm just saying that I think what we need to focus on as a society is like you know what if you want to protect yourself as a woman you should educate yourself well like what i can use to kind of give it like a metaphor or something is like mm-hmm. if you are in line for food and mm-hmm. it's the last that's left but you don't know more is coming out from the kitchen mm-hmm. you're going to be so desperate to just take that that's already there yes. and it's you're going to get the old stuff that no one really wants yes because you didn't wait you didn't wait right and that's i think when women feel like they need men mm-hmm. that's the kind of decision that they make and why do they need them is right. it for they, the baby is it because they're well, love addicts no, a lot of it is, is security it codependent? a lot of it is and a lot of women like now are, don't feel like they need i have a lot of good friends who don't need men and we're you know in that point in the world where it's changing mm-hmm. and i and i don't think we should rule out men at all no, like, no, i'm no, not no. i'm not like a it would be tough feminist species, whatever it's a whole new show now yeah. but no, to I mean, you know like, yourself better to before you better. pick yes. a mate exactly right exactly right. Right. just I'm to tr- be secure within yourself financially mentally emotionally right for sure i want to talk for two minutes yeah. about being about dating and like being a woman of color as okay. well in oh town. yes cool. yeah so what, well, we've what, gotten made fun of for being like a bunch of whiteies just talking about we're like oh yes it's like this or like like we know and this is this was not like like, right before I was on your show, I'm like, great, we can bring her on. Don't yeah. worry. No, I heard about this afterwards. Yeah. 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 All done. So well, I wanted you, know, you even though. There are these statistics, you know, like just reading about being a woman of color. And, and uh, you know, there's that show on BET called Being Mary Jane. And, you know, it, it, like, I remember when that? they were testing it. And there was a statistic before the show started. And it was uh, it just, like, gutted my soul. And it was, like, 42% of women of color are single. And they will never be married and have children. And oh, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. It is. It's. But it's, you were just saying that? that that's that good though. No, it's not. To an extent, well, for to, women to be independent yeah, but and not, not have to be married. They're not to be so independent. But I'm hearing they're not all going through self-discovery. No, no, no. no but I mean, look. At the end of the day, I think it's good to have a family. I think it's good to have a strong family unit where you have a you know a, a father and a mother. And look, nowadays it's 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 different. Society is different. You have a lot of single parents who are doing awesome jobs, and I think I don't think they're getting enough credit. You know. Um, but about that uh, interracial but, dating. Well, it, well interracial. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Why well, are you dating a black man? <laughs> oh, I, I'm thinking I about like it. it. You've stolen our man. <laughs> 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 You're the reason. No, I would bore them to death. <laughs> no, but I mean, I think a lot of, but so I think a lot of women do think that it's because, yeah, of, yeah I mean, it, it happens. But look, my sister is married to an Italian man, and he, there, I love. They, she's happy, you know. So I think at this point, it's like love who you love, and I don't think you should wait for a black man to come into your life. I think you need to, you know, take the color color glasses off and just date. You know, you know, get to know someone. Right. And do you think I'm, for the guys that are listening, it is different to date like a white woman, different to date a black woman? Do, no, like there's I, different honestly, things. Look, culture does have a factor. You know, because um, if I dated a white guy, right, and something happened, like, have let's you ever? Say, yeah, yeah, I have. 
There's nothing wrong. And they were so boring. And something right? were to happen. Oh, stop. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, just tiny I just, dicks. I just, oh, gosh. Oh, my God, my virgin ears. Oh. <laughs> Her mom is right behind you. I know. Too, which makes <laughs> like, oh, my God. I'm like, mom. I'm like sweating. She like, loves oh. this. Don't she worry. Does. Well, I, you know, look. So you're saying if, if you're dating a white guy and something if I, bad would have yeah, happened. Yeah, if something bad happened, like, in terms of, like, you know, someone called me an N-word or something like that. That guy will never understand what I'm going right. through. Right, right. He will never understand. He'd understand it better than someone who's never dated a black person, though. It, well, yeah. A little there bit. There you go. There yeah. you go. I mean, he like, we'd go through it together. Right. You know, I think the best... I, I, I've got to tell you, I had this amazing experience. When Obama got nominated, um, I had to host this party for um, CauseCast, and it was downtown L.A., and... It was it was amazing because I think I, all the black people were frozen. Because <laughs> like we just did not believe that yeah. it was happening, and I just waiting for the other f- I had a meltdown yeah. and I just started crying because I never thought it was going to happen. And, and then all these other white people started crying too. And this guy came up to me and he held my hand. He's like, "How does it feel, <laughs> <laughs> douche? Why do white people have to no. be so douchey?" No, he yeah. was trying but to connect. But no, it... I absolutely appreciated that. I think that's really? the, those are the kind of conversation. I we think a do. lot of people want it. No. Those are the kind of conversations we should have. Race is still such a, you know, controversial topic. And the problem is, I think people, the, the reason why is because we don't talk about it. It's a discourse that still needs to happen. We are so lucky to be in this generation because we're so much more open yeah. to talking about controversial issues. What are the signs, like, say if a white dude wanted to go up to a black chick, mm-hmm. what are the signs? Because he, he might feel tentative, like, she's not going to be well, into me. Is, I'm not the representative of the whole black race. Well, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. You know? <laughs> that's why we brought you on the show. Like, like, speak. I know, but <laughs> then that's the thing. I wish that people would just see me as a woman, first and foremost, before a woman of color. And right. let me tell you, like, you know, someone listening to me now without even seeing me might think that I'm a white girl. And that's a lot. Look, my first name is Christine. My middle name is Zynga. My last name is Blake. And I had to change my name to Zing Blake because, well, A, I love who Zynga represents. You know, yeah. she was a you know, warrior queen or whatever. But when I when I went to places, people would be like, oh, you're Christine Blake? Like, I thought that's you were some blonde episode. white girl. Yeah. Like, Down a chain. You're Dang. so articulate. And it's but, like, then like, but then let's the say, phrase the question. Yeah. Like, let's say some guy did want to approach you mm-hmm. how, as a how, woman. How would he how know? Women? How Just would he know that I was well, that you're open to being approached? How would he know that you are attracted to him as well? well because we'd have a conversation. Uh, that's an easy answer. Be like, how oh, you, how like, would a guy actually? You have to understand that these guys write in and say, "I had a conversation with a girl. I asked her for her phone number, and then she flaked on me." Uh, so, so for these so guys, if they see you, you're a very attractive woman. Well, how would they know that you would be receptive to them approaching? Well, I guess you know if I guess if I also took his number. You know? Really? Yeah, it's like maybe if and, and we actually made plans. Because sometimes, like, when you're into a person, we'll be like, oh, my God, yeah, let's totally do something. Let's totally get together. As opposed to if some guy walked up to me, like, can you can I have your number? And you're like, um, sure. Creeps, right? Because there's right. nothing there. Yeah. Like, if you want to continue something, it makes sense. Like, let's get numbers so that we can continue what's exactly. happening right and, now. And, and your conversation rather than let's will be, start something. Exactly. And your conversation will be longer, right? And then right. you'll find, you know things that you find in common and you know you'll be you, you, it's all about body language and you, you know you can tell when you're when well i guess some people can tell if a girl's into them and well you're really right? friendly this is the I, thing so how do you tell the difference between i'm being friendly and i'm and, married sorry right i could tell how damn it right when we met. but what's the difference between i'm being friendly i'm talking to you for right now and we can like go purse shopping later versus I will bone you in the closet. Lord have mercy. <laughs> um, <laughs> her virgin you know, I am no. The thing is, I'm such a prude. My virgin and, vagina. And you're, you're, and Marty, <laughs> you're on here. You're like, it's like you've hit a topic because it it's like, I'm, I'm a really big prude, and I'm really, really friendly. So people find they mistaken that for me being extremely flirtatious. And exactly. My, like, oh, she must be like a freaky or like really free, and it's like, and then I'm when the they, total opposite. And yeah. then when I'm on a date with them, I'm like, don't touch me. You know? <laughs> That's how I am as well. You too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's like so. It is. It is hard, but I think that. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Don't touch me! I know. Don't touch me! You know, but it's true. It, it, it takes like it takes a long time. I think that what has to happen is I have to explain that to them. Like, I'm a type of person who's you know you have to get to know me before we even take it to that level. And now, especially with a child, especially with a child, it's it's gonna it's gonna take time. You must get a lot of douches that think that though. A lot of guys who probably think, "Oh my God, oh, she likes me." A lot of like nerdy guys, probably like, oh, not and, even douches, think... but like really, really like uh, let's say introverted people mm-hmm. who normally don't get that kind of interaction, and then they might take it to another level and think that, "Oh, she's really into me because I she's so friendly." Think... She's laughing. Well, she's touching me. I think that's that must be really awkward. Why... Well, I think that's probably why I was really single. 
Because a lot of the times people thought, oh my God, she's so friendly. It'll be so easy to get her into bed. Would you get people like on Facebook saying, hey, we should go out? And it's oh, like, at, I don't, all the time. Yeah. And it's like, I don't even remember that person. Yeah. Because you're so friendly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it's, guys it's, are dumb. Guys are really yeah. stupid when it's it really comes hard. to Well, I, I, I'm going to stand up for guys here. That's not really them being dumb. It's them having an intention in their head thinking, I'm talking to her because I like her. I yeah. want to date her. And yeah. then she's being receptive. But, yeah. So. But they, a lot of guys can't realize that women are people too. And they're just right. friendly. And those friendly women and those friendly men. Like if I met a guy on the street who was as friendly as this guy, I wouldn't be like, uh, oh, wow, he wants to fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So guys are dumb in that sense. Yes. I guys. completely agree with you. I want to ask one question for overanalyze this. It's a segment okay, that we yeah. typically have for the second half of the show. That's yes. usually three or four questions. We have time for one. But I want to get your oh, opinion no. on these. No, but it's great. We were having really wonderful conversations, so I like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, ladies and guests. I have recently started listening um, to your podcast after hearing you on Loveline. I'm in love with your podcast. That's I have lovely. been with my boyfriend for one and a half years. We... Uh, uh, we have known each other for nine and wow. living together for one year. In my past relationships, me and my exes had intense sexual chemistry. However, the chemistry my current boyfriend and I have is not as intense. I am not sure if it is a mixed match of libidos or if we are not sexually compatible. Would you say a relationship should end because of a lack of sexual chemistry? Is there a way to awaken or develop it? I find myself wanting the same spark I had with my previous relationships and feel like I'm stuck between wanting to stay with him because he has a good man but we don't have the sexual side of a relationship mm. thank you so much for your help love you ladies for all that you do wow it's, so what do you think i mean nine years is a very long time to, to be, know each other to know each other and how long have they been together they've been, been together for one and a half years they've lived together for a year right I, I, they've lived together for nine year. months uh-huh. they've uh, it's been her boyfriend for a year and a half and they've Here known now. each other Sorry, for one year, uh, living together for one year, and sorry, known known each other for nine. It'll probably end if she just lets him know everything mm-hmm. that she just let us know. Really? Yeah. That would, you like, think it would that end? would man him. That would kill the relationship. Yeah. I think. If she she's okay, so th- so advise on if that. she like, if she if he if she tells him, hey, all my last boyfriends were way better in bed, and I had a better sexual relationship, <laughs> and this really okay, bothers that, me. Yes, he'd probably yes. walk. Well, I don't. You think you but don't. But, no, but don't you think that? Th- don't guy. you think it's worth to have a conversation? I think yes. you should have a. I th- look, well, I think what's this, the right way to do it? I think this happens with a lot of relationships. For Things sure. fizzle, and I just actually read something today. 25, I know. Twenty-five profound habits of real life happy couples. Can I read you some of them? Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, so, what? Who is this? Oh, well, I just read it on social media. It's twenty-five couple happy happy, happy couple, couple habits. Habits, yes. And I think that's the thing. It's like you need to reinvent Brace things. Yourself. I think one of my favorite ones, though was the fight box um what? and it said yeah it said you draw a box like my bedroom fight it out. no it, this is beautiful it's called the fight box like some people build one of uh, one of, some people build one of these at their wedding but you can also put one together the first day you say i love you write love love letters to each other and place it into a box along with a bottle of wine nail it shut when you have your first fight open it up pour the wine go to separate corners, <laughs> yeah. read the Back love the letters, and remember what it's all about. I love to drink, though, so I'd be starting fights. Like, I love to wine. <laughs> but I Let's think get that, that box out. No, but I think it's such a, you, you need to have that conversation. For sure. I, th- I think that this is something to definitely talk about. I wouldn't bring it up and say, like, listen, my other boyfriends were way better yeah. than you in bed. I Let's would, fix this. Well, I'm like, just saying, if she wants that, I, I do think that this relationship is done. Do you really think yeah, so? Yeah, absolutely, for well, sure. Okay, absolutely. I, I will yes. say something. Wow. If every single person she's had sex with before this guy was better, that mm. there's no, it's but only going to get worse. But, but she has she a has, connection with him, like emotionally. Yes, there's a plenty of guys she'll find connections with out there emotionally. I think that that's hard. Physical. No, I think no, it's yeah, hard. No, this is amazing. Yeah, but no, <laughs> like, but it, that it isn't. That's your your point of view. Thank oh, God, that's empty because I was yeah. screwed your phone up. Um, okay, this is the thing. They've known each other for nine years, which means they've already gone through the ups and downs. They're comfortable with one another in terms of partnership. It's wonderful yes and, and you do have to bring that spark to the sexual side or mm-hmm. else you will end up being friends and then it's just it's, it becomes a boring relationship they were yeah. friends for nine years they tried to make it uh, more than friends and it sounds like it's not working for her and there are going to be plenty of guys out there that she can find both with well, I yeah think. And i think unless you know, i don't know what this person looks like <laughs> well i think I that she you, writes okay when <laughs> when your when your relationship is not good sexually i think you know it, it will force you to cheat yeah, and you can you can try and talk about. It. I work on um, uh, sex with Emily as well uh, yeah. weekly. Uh, I'm kind of like art, except I talk more. 
Yeah, yeah Art's not even in there now. I know. He's like, yeah. <laughs> he's like Emily demands show. my attention, and I talk a lot uh, on, on her show. And uh, she's constantly, and I'm sure you guys do too, uh, saying you got to talk about sex. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I'm married to someone who gets really uncomfortable when sex even gets brought up. So yeah. everything we talk about is actually we don't talk. It's just all physical. But it is very important to have some kind of communication with sex. And it sounds like she's just laying there, mm-hmm. letting him do it, and she's not satisfied. And she's probably taking a shower right afterwards, taking care of herself. He yeah. has no idea he's watching ESPN. Well, the, 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 That's a problem. Thinking it, she's it is fine, a problem, but yeah. I think that it actually can be worked on because they did I have that nine-year foundation. They didn't yeah. start off with that sexual peak in yes. their relationship. They were friends at first. So the kind of things that were off limits. And sometimes you, that works out beautifully. It sounds yeah. like it's not here. So, but well, it, it sounds like it's not right now. But it can be worked on. So she's asking, how do you actually work on that and then reignite that spark? Well, so it doesn't just, really sound like there ever was a spark there. But right. you can inject that into. I'm your sure there was like the first time. You know, that, they need to talk probably. about what each other like. Then, yeah, because there may be things in his head where he's like, ah, you know, like she's my friend. I don't think I can do that to her, or I see her this way. I don't know if it's allowed. And if she's faking, don't fake anymore. You know, yeah. right. well, there's a say, good chance she's was, faking. Right, but you, I was saying with, with Zinga, like you were saying, fake, I'm fake. kind of a prude. So if a guy did meet you and you're like, I'm a prude, and then he's like, okay, well, I can't do certain things with you. I yeah. see you a certain way, mm-hmm. and then you get comfortable and you're like, I want to unleash this beast inside of me. Mm-hmm. He's already been, you know, on board with you are a prude and you want to go slow. Is there a sexual beast inside of you? <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> you're like, this, my these sexual ladies. beast is like hairy. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. That is awful. Gosh, as a mommy, I mean, I don't know, Marnie, how do you feel as a mom now? Like, do you... As a mom having sex? Well, I guess I'm, maybe much. it's because I'm divorced and I'm like I'm saying I just I don't know. I guess when when you have a husband, it's different. Well, actually, I was going to save this to talk about on another episode, and we will talk more about it in depth about mm-hmm. like um, you know relationship burnout. About the thing is, is that when you are in a long term relationship, it's sort of like being in an office, right? You have your jobs, your your you yeah, have your job as a mom and a dad everywhere. and a husband and wife, and you you nag and you do this and you kind of forget that the other individual is number one a human being yes. who wants to be loved and. Wanted and, and, and feel sexy. Yeah. And so for me, you know, I, I also want that. I still want to be wanted. Why do you mm-hmm. think I'm like craving construction workers <laughs> to whistle at yeah. what it comes down to <laughs> what it comes down to and I think you guys all agree is you gotta speak up for yourself whether yeah, you're the absolutely. guy or the girl you gotta yes. speak up for your own needs and that's what my wife is really good at she it speaks up for herself lets me know what where I'm falling short mm-hmm. not necessarily sexually but everywhere else and I do the same thing not nearly as eloquently as she does mm-hmm. so I come off as kind of an asshole when I do it yeah. and a whiny little bitch but you got to, you gotta find you gotta let your partner know what yeah. is bothering you on a regular basis don't yeah. just and I think a and lot and as the of, partner you yeah, have right. to be open to listening if yeah. you instantly get defensive and angry the conversation is never going to happen right Right. Right. and it's going to just die yeah yeah Yeah, communication is key and so so for this woman who wrote in it's not saying you know what like my other boyfriends are way better than you that's what i heard to them and their penises are much smaller than yours i'm going to cheat on you as we were talking about in the beginning half of the show but i think it's like bringing up the conversation about how how can we you know do something different like come take a class with me or you know you can do the boxing the fight box and make it more exciting and and watch porn 100 (laughs) percent I actually do believe uh, agree with that. 100%. Especially if it's the reverse here. If the uh, girl's not doing what the guy likes, I think a lot yeah. of time watching porn. Not uh, that sounds wrong because there's so much horribleness in porn, and you know, with all the the I'm sorry violence. The not the, even the violence, but like the facials and like the oh, anal gosh. and all that. And that's yeah. kind of yeah, become a norm. I'm not ones. saying that, but like there's certain porns that are like nice and touchy and sweet, and Sensual. you know, you can let the yeah. uh, let the lady know, like that's what a good blowjob looks like. Right. Oh, Have you ever seen like, that? This is what a nice husband's like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just joking. And she just walks out the door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but I think that communication is really key for this. Yes. And you can say to your significant other, like, I do, I want to I want to let you know what I like sexually. I may not have liked it nine years ago, but for now I have, you know, these things inside me where it's I want to. It's tough, It's really oh, it's tough. tough. It sounds so aggressive and uncomfortable. It, yeah, and that, also that, sounds that, like you're insulting him. For like, sure. you yeah. haven't been doing but this so Chris, far. But what Chris is saying is that if you have to be open to it because if not, you're not going to say anything. Anything, and right. then your your relationship is doomed. You well, can do it in the bedroom too. You can physically do it, like taking his hand and putting it where you want it, or you know, yeah, like I, I on, get the, the, on the TV remote. Like, sure. be like, she's she's it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, no I mean, TV in the bedroom. The only the only thing she might jeopardize is like he might he might get insecure. It, well, fuck him then. Well, no, it's Any not guy that. who no. doesn't like like toys being brought out during sex or no, being but it's told not even that. I'm not saying that. It's just it's the approach. It's yeah. like the, my boyfriend you has have to exercise the level the of diplomacy when you have these kind of conversations. The yeah. most sensitive ego in the yeah. world. Yeah, and I mean, like, I so have if you to brought live. out like a little vibrator during sex, he'd be intimidated. And no. Upset. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know that about you. It's no, but I mean, anything. What if you blow? like, if I say, like, oh, your hair looks different today, he'll be like, what do you mean? Well, yeah, why, why? Why are you looking at me? Like, oh, what? Does he you know, know you talk about him this way? 
Yes, he does. Does he listen to the I show? That's why he responds. That's why he's that. so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he doesn't listen to the show, thank God. Yeah, because it would be, get a lot, a lot worse. He'd be like, oh, I didn't realize how much you hated me. Yeah. <laughs> like, why were you <laughs> saying that about me on the show? Why? Right. Is something I but no, I mean, for, for me, it's very difficult to bring up things that I want changed because I know the response is going to be very. Got to like, work it, on that, Chris. Uh, 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 uh. I so know, but it's the thing hard. is, is that you have to push through it. Like, I, I am an over communicator, and I'm sure my oh, husband yeah. feels beaten down quite often mm-hmm. because I do over communicate. But I would actually prefer to over communicate. That's than how you work. That's yeah. good because exactly. I'm an under communicator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I that, think this lady is too. The, the email this, yeah, I think yeah. so too. So the first yeah. step is communication, and yes, it can be changed, and you mm-hmm. have to figure out what you want for a long term partnership. And if this is really, you know, satisfying for you right now, but there are missing pieces, then you have to figure out. Okay, which is more important for you? Is it really important right now for you to have like a rockin', you know, sex life, or do you want to have Just an turn amazing on fart barf. partner? Yeah, and then you listen to fart barf together, and then you're totally fine. It's good makeup. All right, well, really thank awesome. you so much for being on our guys. show. Thank you you so guys much. will definitely be back. Zero sure. zero still U.S. Yeah, thank you. All right. Oh, oh wow. Oh, God. World Cup. All right, and show over. 